Should you hold your net on 14652? Atos versus Tar Heel and learning the phonetic alphabet. All that coming up on Mailbag Monday. What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to Ham Radio 2. My name is Mike K at MRD. If you have amateur radio-related questions for me, shoot me an email. I would love to hear from you. K8MRD at iCloud.com. We've got some great questions this week, so let's dive right in. This first viewer is asking, I am trying to start a Georgia Preppers net on 2-meter simplex. Some of the members in my club have pushed back a bit on the frequency of choice. I initially proposed 14652 as this is the national calling frequency, and every Monday evening we do a rag chew simplex net following our Monday night repeater net, just to test our equipment and make sure everyone can hear each other. One of the members pushed back and stated 14652 is for calling and then moving up the band only. This is not a net frequency. He's not wrong. I asked, what do you suggest for a good one that doesn't interfere with local repeaters and will not affect calling frequencies? He suggested 14655. I said, okay, that works. Sent out an email stating the change and a Discord announcement at the same time. More people pushed back again saying 14655 will interfere with a local 146850 repeater. That is insane. I said, let's do a test and check interference. Some say it will, some say it won't work. Others say, screw it, go back to 5-2. We do it there anyway, who cares? I'm kind of of that opinion. I'm fairly new to the hobby being only licensed for two years and the old heads around here don't like change, I think, and don't want their little rag shoes stepped on. Could you suggest some advice for dealing with this situation? So while it is true, 14652 is the national simplex calling frequency, uh, I have traveled all over this great country while monitoring 14652 and almost never, ever does anyone uh, talk on 52 that I've heard. I actually did have a cue, so I passed a guy coming back from Huntsville Ham Fest who was a ham and he saw my uh, car and, and we had a nice chat. But other than that, that was like the only time I've ever driven across country and had a conversation on 5.2. So if you live in an area that actually has activity on 5.2, congratulations. Yes, technically it is the calling frequency and technically you should move up. But I'm kind of of the mindset that if nobody's using it, use it. Who cares? That way, if somebody actually does need to use it, has an emergency or something, or wants to make a call, they know that their radio at least works, and they can hear you, and they can break in and say, hey, can I make a, I gotta make a call real quick, you guys can stop your net, let them make the call, they can move on to another frequency, that's fine. Now, if people are using it, uh, it might not be a good idea to use 5.2 as a net. Uh, but I can tell you here at my house, I have 14652 monitoring almost all the time, and I never hear anybody. I mean, like months, years go by, and I don't hear anyone on 52. So it's it's unfortunate that it doesn't get moved uh, or or used as much as it should. What else did you say? Yeah, uh, the the 146850 repeater is definitely not going to be interfered with by 14655. It sounds like you've got a crybaby net. <laughs> and not a prepper's net. So maybe you need to maybe you need to start a new group. But let, let, let me just show you uh, what you can do. So one thing I did when I first got licensed, I printed off this chart right here that has the two meter and 440 simplex frequencies. Don't ask me where I got this. Just Google two meter FM simplex frequencies and you'll come up with a whole uh, list here. But two meter FM call, 14652. You also have 146535, 550, 565, 580, 595, 147405, 147420. They're 15 kilohertz apart is basically the gist of it. So uh, if you're on 550, let me just show you. So here we have my home radio here. It's 50 watt mobile radio tuned to 146850. And my ICOM ID50 is tuned to 146550. Let's just key up right here, right next to the radio. K at MRD. See how 146850 is not being interfered with at all? So that just debunked uh, your friends there saying that it's gonna interfere with that frequency, which by the way, that's a repeater frequency. And if we tune this to 850, we'll have a negative offset, which will transmit on 146250. So nowhere near that simplex frequency. You are fine on 146550. Now, 
This radio is on 14652. If I just go to 14653, key up, yeah, we got some interference there. But if I go to 535, look at that. We're 15 kilohertz away. There's no interference. You want to go to 550, knock yourself out. You want to go to 555, knock yourself out. You want to go to 14648. We use this a lot uh, for our ham radio trips at the festivals. Look at that. Nothing. You can go all over the place. My buddy Vern and his wife Renee use 146540 when they're traveling and they are using different cars. So they're not on FM simplex. That's just kind of the frequency they chose to use for traveling. You can use any frequency you want. You're not going to interfere. You want to go to 585, knock yourself out. Doesn't matter. So I would say pick a frequency. If you want 146.55, I think that's a great frequency. 146.58 is also kind of like another uh, kind of popular FM uh, two meter simplex frequency. Maybe try that. But uh, I would just tell your guys to stop whining, pick a frequency. I, I would probably say don't do a net on 5.2. Uh, I'm a little biased because I'm not a big fan of nets. Uh, but if there's no activity on 5.2, there's nothing wrong with it. Just do it. Somebody will probably complain. There's probably the two meter police out there that just does nothing but monitor two meter simplex uh, only for people like you that will say, you need to get off. This is for calling for, who cares? Just, just have a net. Five, five, you're fine. Just do it. Next, we've got the age old question. Atos versus Tar Heel. This viewer writes, hey, Mr. Mike. I'm, I'm a mister now. So as to not compromise your relationship with those who help you with products to test, I beg a question. I bought a van last year, a very tall van, and I'm now just getting around to making it into a poda shack. That sounds awesome. In the past, I've been extremely happy with my shark ham sticks. I do hear good things. Now I'm chomping at screwdriver antennas. I've heard pros and cons about both the Atos and the Little Tar Heel 2. While I'm leaning towards the Little Tar Heel 2, I'd like your opinion on which you like the best, as I kind of respect your opinion. It just kind of? <laughs> Many hams really don't like the ATOS, but there are a lot of fans, myself included. Plus, it's an easy hookup to the FT891, and it's less expensive. Little Tar Heel 2 is a bit more expensive, well, a lot more. So if reasonable money wasn't an object, how would your dice roll? Well, there is a reason the Yesu ATOS is on my car, and the Little Tar Heel 2 is sitting in a bucket in the corner of my shack here, not being used. Um, if you have an 891, which it sounds like you do, there's no reason to not use the ATOS. In terms of performance, and I've used both the little Tar Heel 2 for many years, and now the ATOS for many years. I've done comparison videos uh, using Whisper to compare the performance, both receive and transmit, uh, with the Tar Heel and the ATOS. They're very, very similar. In my single test, the ATOS beat out the Tar Heel ever so slightly, but honestly, if I did another test on another day, the Tar Heel could have been, I mean, it was, it was negligible. So they're kind of all the same, even ham sticks, Tar Heels, ATOS, um, Diamond, Tar Heel Designs, Scorpions, they're all loaded whip, and they're all loaded vertical antennas. So they kind of all do the same. The difference for me and why I use the ATOS is how well it integrates with the Yesu radios because they're both made by Yesu. You literally push one button on the 891 or any ATOS compatible Yesu radio and the antenna just tunes itself and it just works. Whereas the Tar Heel, you need to get a separate control box. I mean, it comes with an up and down button if you wanna do it manually, but you have to buy a separate control box uh, that you can save the memories for each band and stuff, but you still got to fine tune it every time you go back to that band. There are RF sensing control boxes as well. I've used the MFJ one, didn't have great success with it. There are other ones, I forget the names, but they're probably better and cost more money. Uh, the one benefit that the Tar Heel has is that you can swap out the whip very easily and put, say, like a 17 foot whip on it, which I've done many times with great success, but. The ATOS just works so well. And the main reason you're gonna hear people griping about the ATOS is they don't understand how to use it. I just watched a video from a guy in the UK who was having trouble with his ATOS. And I read all the comments and everyone, every single forum, every single comment you read about the ATOS, everyone says, oh, you, got, you gotta have really, really good grounding and it's gotta be bonded with, with all kinds of whips and chains and, and like every, 
It's malarkey. On two different cars with two different mounts, I have mounted the Asu Atos and the Tar Heel using Diamond K400 mounts for the Tar Heel and the Atos, and now with the Comet mounts that I have uh, for the hood of my Ford Explorer. Never grounded or bonded anything. They work properly. The problem with the Atos that people get confused is when you tune it, sometimes it gets confused and you'll see no power output on your radio. But the little ATS light will be flashing on the radio indicating that it's like working, but it's not working. Well, that is actually a good thing. The Yesu doesn't know where it is. It doesn't have a step counter. So sometimes it gets confused. If you just let that ATS button just flash, or light rather, for a solid minute, the ATOS is like recalibrating. And after that, I mean, I'm talking a literal 60 seconds, the ATOS will start moving again. That's it. And I think that's why most people think that it's either a bad antenna or it's not grounded properly. I'm talking Diamond K400 mount with just the four screws screwed into the paint of my car. Throw out that little metal thing that comes with it, uh, that little metal plate. Throw that out. You don't need it. I preach the good word about the Yesu Atos time and time again. Uh, if you have a Yesu radio, it's kind of a no-brainer. If you don't have a Yesu radio, ah, there's probably a way to get it to work. I know there is. Um, but it's not as easily integrated, so you might want to go the Tar Heel route. But, dude, the, the ATOS, I have made so many contacts with that antenna. DX, in the States, all over the world, sitting in my car, driving down the road. I worked a guy in Costa Rica when I was driving up to Dallas for field day. No grounding, no bonding, nothing. It just works. Now, I do have grounding just by the way I mounted it, but I didn't do anything special. I literally just bolted the mount to my car, screwed the ATOS in, screwed the coax into my radio, and it worked. So, I, have I gone on enough about how much I like the ACU ATOS antenna? All right, thanks for writing. <laughs> Lastly, we've got a question about the phonetic alphabet. This viewer writes, hi, Mike. Don't know if you have any suggestions for this. I've been an amateur for a couple years now. I'm decent at converting letters into the phonetic alphabet, but struggle when receiving phonet phonetic alphabet and converting to regular letters for logging. I aspire to do an activation someday, Matt. So Matt, when I first got licensed, just like this two meter simplex band plan, I printed out the phonetic alphabet, I laminated it, and I tacked it to the wall behind my radio. So it was always there. Now. I was fortunate to have a couple friends who I met on the Clarkston repeater in Clarkston, Michigan. We'll give a shout out to Jason W8ZZU and Drew W8DRW. He and I would spend long evenings uh, having a couple adult beverages and uh, Jason W8ZZU was, was definitely the Elmer as Drew and I were pretty new. But uh, you know, we would practice our phonetics. You know, even if you had to ID every 10 minutes, I would have to look at, pretend this is a phonetic alphabet. I would have to look at the chart art. I'm Kilo, eight, uh, let's see, where's the M? Mike, uh, Romeo, Delta, okay? And back then I was K-E-A-D-P-F, so Kilo, Echo, eight, Echo, Papa, Foxtrot was my original call. So that's kind of how I got into the phonetic alphabet, just talking to guys on the repeaters, um, one of them being uh, licensed for many years and, and kind of, we're all kind of the same age, so. Uh, we just chatted over that. So definitely print out a phonetic alphabet and just have it near you. That is what helped me. Uh, other, otherwise, just listen in to other POTA, cont POTA activators when you're sitting in your shack listening and just jot them down on paper, their call signs, or, or type in your logging software and just do like a practice listening uh, activation where... Uh, you, I mean, hopefully you'll hear the guys pile up and, and pick out a call uh, that you hear and just start learning that way or just go out and do an activation. It's important to know that you run your POTA activation as you want. So you'll see guys like me or, or, or James, KE8PZN, and we're just going. We're quick, man. It's just one after the next. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. But that's we're just we're just raking in the context. That's what we want to do. But if you want to take it slow, take it slow. And don't be afraid to tell people, hey guys, sorry, I'm, I'm new, this is my first activation, I'm still, I'm still learning uh, translating phonetics into regular letters, 
And at some point, it will just click and you'll just start looking at letters and seeing them phonetically. Uh, you know, like when I see letters, it's, you know, like we could we could read your, uh, where are you? We could just read your email, your uh, letter here. Hotel Echo, Yankee, Mike, India, Kilo, Echo, Delta, Oscar, November, Tango, Kilo, November, Oscar, Whiskey, India, Foxtrot, Yankee, Oscar, Uniform. And it, it's just, you just know. Just like seeing the words, seeing the letters, it just, it'll click one day. And it takes practice. But, you know, if you have some people on, on uh, the repeaters to talk with, but uh, especially on HF, because there's always people talking on HF and there's always people activating POTA. Listen to their activations and transcribe it uh, as as best you can. And the only thing you can do is get better. So that's my advice. And guys, if you've got amateur radio related questions for me, please shoot me an email. K8MRD at iCloud.com. My name is Mike, K8MRD. Thanks so much for watching Ham Radio 2. We'll see you next time. 73.